like this in those long games. So that's where you can see at 40, 50% dampening, people start making mistakes, but that is just normal uh, when you have to play at such a high level. I think this is actually really interesting. So Temple Storm knows they're most likely gonna get farmed if they try to do a mirror against Blizzo and XRB, but against Method Black, they know they're gonna be playing that RMD. And we saw what happened when the Turbo went up against the RMD. So they're gonna copy pasta uh, XRB's comp here and apply it against Method Black here. And that's gonna give them a huge edge uh, in game number one. And we already see that Zazak's Veiled Eye proking off of Jamie. What nice it, Cyclone. What would it mean if Method Black just walked all over Temple Storm in this matchup? It, uh, yikes. Yikes, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, That's ultimately, amazing. though, it's not even that bad for Tempo Storm, is the funny thing, right? If Method Black goes on to win the tournament, those points just get... Uh, they're in a good spot. Yeah, exactly. I mean, look at the top teams right now. They're all top teams in the EU region. The EU gets to send so many teams to BlizzCon. They, they pretty much send all, like, they send so many teams. Like, it, it's honestly, you get down to the place where it's, like, major upset for another team to be able to make it because you, let's be honest, even in the EU where you have the deepest amount of teams, the deepest amount of talent, five teams is a lot to feel. Yeah, yeah, I mean, essentially there is, there is a, almost a, a great certainty here that Tempo Storm uh, and, um, uh, making a movie are gonna be for sure qualifying uh, Temple Storm is really only the one on that bubble there as long as they keep uh, placing you know in the top eight or top six even and even now they're in the top three so I really think Temple Storm they're kind of the team closest to the bubble but they also as long as they keep cons uh, consistently making top eight I see them easily qualifying Especially if Method Black keeps winning. I mean, that's the thing. If Method Black keeps winning, the upset potential almost evaporates because the the majority of the points go to a place that doesn't need points. They get deleted, essentially. I mean, the one difference I'm seeing right now from Tempo Storm, they obviously just took the same composition they lost to and they're playing it themselves. The main difference I see is that in Poike and Looney, Looney was being aggressive, going for Cyclones, even one game playing the Feral Affinity. Maybe even Poike doesn't want to go that far, but in Poike is playing this matchup very passively, and that's a significant difference than we've seen from XRB. And it feels like they kind of need the additional pressure to close out the game at least a little bit earlier if they want to pressure Chaz, which it seems like that's what Nixie and Jamie really want to do. Now a big kidney shot over on him in Poike, Raikou and Waz looking to make a swap over there. Kidney shot's going to be converted into a polymorph, but Jamie and Nixie seem to be in an okay spot. Chaz actually taking a decent amount of pressure here. Jamie doing a good job laying in with that enhancement shaman to keep that pressure up. I really like what Jamie did there. He saw Chaz casting Cyclone, so he started moving towards the pillar so he could LOS at the end of the cast, and that's like really high level play for Amelia. A lot of lo lesser experienced players would just keep attacking and then get Cyclone, but Jamie's just repositioning even in that 1v1 situation. And Poike pushing forward for Nurso's Vortex. Looks like he's trying to get a little bit more cheeky than he has been this game, but ultimately not getting a lot done there. Yeah, he's probably just trying to feel out the damage. You know, I mean, Poike doesn't probably normally heal the setup that often, as opposed to Looney, so maybe just realizing how much damage his team can take and then opt to get a little bit more aggressive as the game progresses. So right there, Waz actually lines up in Poike and commits the Vendetta onto Nixie now. Because the Vendetta is nowadays in BFA a two-minute cooldown, as well as the blind for assassination is a two-minute cooldown, that's a really good trade from Impoike. When he has Trinket back up, the threat that Waz brings is going to be back up. I want to see Waz space out those cooldowns, drop the blind, don't use the Vendetta, and then use the Vendetta when Raikou lands a Polymorph. Uh, you can maybe set that up with your Vanish uh, and maybe force something out that way. I also want to highlight that I think out of all the players on the map, Waz Transmog for sure is the best. Bloodfang set, timeless classic. What do you think, Rich? I was literally just DMing Asmigold. The, the timing on that was absolutely <laughs> insane. Oh, man. <laughs> I have to call the expert here <laughs> to, to assess the Transmog. <laughs> but I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure right now if I could channel <laughs> if I could channel my, my inner holocraft right now. I'd, 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 Full oh. sun. <laughs> All right. Veiled eye. Veiled eye absorb. Big shield. Gonna save Waz there. That so. might have been a more powerful cooldown than he would have needed to trade in that situation, but that tanking trinket that you can go run Mythrax for right now if you're on live and you're 
looking for something to do before dampening starts. You open up WoW on your second monitor, run some uh, normal Mithrax, try to get your hands on that tank trinket. It's definitely the most powerful trinket in the game at the moment for PvP, so you definitely want to keep an eye on it. Oh, <laughs> nice. Zelda is watching you. <laughs> Velda is watching over all of us. I'm, I'm pretty sure every player on the map has it equipped. Maybe not Raikou. Honestly, Raikou is the only one who can get away with not using it. Um, but we do see another kid. He has, the, he has the blind ready in one second, as well as that Vendetta. Waz is not going to pull the trigger on the Vendetta. And, and there is the Veiled Eye. So now, uh, Waz and Metal Black procs the Veiled Eye there. Now, in the next kidney shot on Nixie, they're going to try to blind me in Poike and not use that Vendetta. And then... Oh, what are these doing? There's the Vanish. He's trying to sap. He doesn't get the sap. Waz... Just save the Vanish and set up for Raikou. So a helpful thing, too, to do for Failed Eye, because it does have an internal cooldown of two minutes, you can actually, because obviously it's not tracked right now in our UI, one of the things that you can kind of do when you see Failed Eye go off, just look at another cooldown, and then you'll have a decent idea of when it's going to go off. I know that's how I've been tracking it throughout the weekend, because we have seen whoa, a whoa, lot whoa, of whoa. Was taking some damage. Jamie and Nixie have been pressuring him quite a bit, but Chaz, he's been doing so well with his mana management. He's basically full mana at this point in the game. Bash on Minpoike. Jamie could be in some trouble. Trinket is going to proc. It's going to make him very durable once again. 10% dampening. It's only a matter of time before healing gets reduced to a point where both these teams start gen generating massive pressure. They're not playing around the Veil Die. There was popped his Vendetta. Instead of doing it on Nixie, who they proc the Veil Die on, they went ahead and did it onto Jamie, who still had his Veil Eye. Jamie didn't even need to use his Astral Shift for that Vendetta, and that's going to be another two minutes added to the clock. Uh, Waz Veil Eye now proccing as well, so he's going to be a pretty viable kill target, and there's a small woman, Nixie. He's going to shrink it and probably survive that one. Uh, my pocket shrinks that plan, too. That was really nice. Uh, Waz manages to get the Smoke Bomb down. Forces Nixie to get the trinket out of that. Blinds Minpoike, so now they're in a situation. Minpoike, no trinket. Nixie, no trinket. You can bet that Raikou, he's going to be playing that Kleptomania. So if they can get one nice CC chain, if Chaz can push in, get a Bash Cyclone onto a Minpoike, you get a big stun off on the Nixie with a Kleptomania. That's an opportunity for Method Black to close out this game. In the meantime, Waz still under fire. Kidney Shot committed over on the Nixie. Do they have any CC on him in Poike? It doesn't look like it, but they did proc the trinket. So that's another step towards victory for Method Black. Yeah, and Waz also has Vanish now, so he can set that up either with the Bash or uh, with the Vanish here um, onto Mimpoika. If Raikou lands a Polymorph out of either of those, that could really be dangerous for Nixie moving forward. And I just want to highlight uh, Tempo Storm. They're not playing the same uh, the same way XRB did. XRB looked a lot better on this composition. I mean, Poike hasn't uh, really, uh, sorry, Chas hasn't really been pressured at all by this uh, Enhancement Shaman Warrior, whereas I mean, Poike was under pressure the entirety of the game. All right. I'm curious what you guys think if Tempo Storm win game number one. Do you think Method Black changed their composition? If they do, what do they change to? Yeah, Warrior didn't really seem better when we saw that last match. We'll have to see Nixie now on Chaz. He uses the Iron Bark to keep himself alive. Nixie doesn't want to overextend, though. Raku have been doing a good job keeping the pressure on him. Cheap shot on him and Poike into the full polymorph. Nixie all alone pre-activates that die by the sword. That's going to avoid a lot of damage coming in from Waz. Icy Veins still not committed by Raku. That would have been a good spot for him to use that Icy Veins, but now he has it for after the die by the sword. So maybe just wanted to bait out that cooldown before fully committing to a kill. All right, Waz is definitely taking the brunt end of this exchange from Nixie, but they've set up a kill window here, getting that die by the sword before Vendetta. And Poike's trying to go for a drink. This is a critical time of the game, though. He can't really afford to spend too much time drinking. He has to jump back into the fight to save Nixie during this moment of vulnerability. Dampening likely to get around 35 to 40%, I think, before Nixie ultimately goes down, but that's still a lot of time for Waz to get a clean setup. And Poike's mana still doing worse than Chaz. The, it is in favor of Method Black in this position. They've got good crowd control onto the entire team as Nixie Trinket's out in these potentially final seconds of the game number one. Will he be able to stay alive? Chaz continues the chain. Nixie hangs on by a threat. Yep, Raikou's still not committing the Icy Veins. That could have been a good moment. I mean, Poike commits the Iron Bark. So this next setup, Raikou, I want to see that Icy Veins coming out of you because that is a great spot for your team to be in to actually land a kill. Uh, Waz still put some pressure. It was a nice little spot from Waz there with that Shadow Step Kidney when Nixie leapt away. Luckily for Nixie, he did charge in line of sight, so he didn't get 
completely deleted. That was a good play from him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're starting to mount up into critical mass at 30 to 40% dampening range. Was stunned with no trinket. Sharpened blade from Nixie. Rocking the Veiled Eye Absorb and soaking a lot of damage. However, moving forward, he will have no answers. Chaz used Iron Bark during that attempt, which you could argue was a mistake. The Veiled Eye was available, and now this cooldown overlap from Method Black leaves them open for Tempo Storm to push forward. Ascendance available in another 40 seconds, roughly, for Jamie. Method Black are trying to get a win before that point with everybody in crowd control. Jamie opts to Trinket and Grounding Totem incoming crowd control, but now they follow up with Blind. Oh, Waz! And Poike is being greedy, but Waz is the one who's dipping ditch low. Nice! Wind shear onto Chaz. Uh -oh. Waz defensively shadow steps away to safety. Clutch play from Waz. That was such a scary moment for Waz there. He needs to be very careful. Nixie and Jamie can just target him at any moment, take him down very, very fast, especially if Chaz isn't reacting to the situation. Chaz actually going for a drink right now. He's going to be potentially resetting his mana, getting ahead of Minpoike. Minpoike, no trinket. Nixie still in some trouble. Waz, he's going to be moving in and making some plays. Nixie, he tried to stop the drink, but now he's out of line of sight and gets kidney shot with no trinket. It's going to be a huge Huge throw for Temple Storm very early on. Luckily, Minpoike gets in line of sight, connects oh. the Iron Bark, but there is a full sheet connected by Raikou. Yeah, but Nixie got Iron Barked right before it, so he looks to be durable enough. In the meantime, Jamie is mounting an attack towards Chaz, landing a lot of wind shears towards the end of this game. It's really important that he does at such a critical mass of dampening. Even one wind shear could end the match. Yep, Raikou did commit his Icy Veins there, but Vendetta's gonna be used by Waz. He's trying to take down Nixie with the full Cyclone on him, and Poike, cheap shot on Nixie, gets to die by the sword off, but all these bleeds are still gonna be rotting through. Raikou trying to get in some damage, and Nixie's in so much trouble. But Poike gets out of the crowd control, but not enough healing there. Method Black will claim game number one. Able to find that first victory at 40% dampening, and Tempo Storm now has lost four maps back to back to back to back. <laughs> That's well, almost that's higher than Rich's rating. Yeah, well, they're definitely <laughs> getting there. You literally cue with me. You're insulting yourself. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Whatever. Let's see what Temple Storm can get done. Nixie and Jamie going to be moving over onto Raikou, potentially trying to slow him down once again. Highest rated Warlock NA. <laughs> it's kind of like being the highest rated Holy Priest right now, Rich. Is I mean, sh the competition is Shout out to people. Envious. <laughs> yeah, shout out to Envious, <laughs> the only guy you're competing against. Ooh, nice set there onto Minpoike. A little bit of damage going out on a Nixie, but out of the CC, Minpoike should be able to recover. Raikou is actually doing a good amount of damage here. Iron Bark's going to be committed by Minpoike on that Vendetta. Now, Nixie will inevitably get top. Bash over onto Waz. Nixie wants to counter pressure. A lot of pressure over on Waz, but Chaz responds with his own Iron Bark. Now, both teams' HP should stabilize. I also just want to point out the targeting has changed. The Rogue Mage was always going after the Enhancement Shaman. Now they're always going after the Warrior. And deep in dampening, that, that is quite effective because 50% reduced healing on the Enhance. He's less likely to save the Warrior. However, this time Tempo Storm are also going for a different target. They're chasing down Raikou and swapping to Chaz. So finally, they're getting aggressive, playing to their win conditions. Yeah, this is nice. Chaz still under fire. Nixie all over him and Poike as well, trying to help out. Chaz gets Cyclone here. They might be able to turn their attention over onto Raikou. It doesn't look like the Poike is going to be able to get that off. Waz still just pressuring down Jamie a little bit. Jamie can't reach his target, so he's doing what we talked about. As a melee, if you can't get on your primary target, you need to at least pressure down somebody, which is Waz. All right, Jamie locked down in crowd control. Raikou controlling Nixie. Good setup from Method Black. Blind now on Minpoike, opts to trinket it. Chaz moves over to bash the trinket. I don't think they really have any momentum to swing off of that, unfortunately. So it's going to basically reset the fight at this point. Let's see possible win conditions. With no trinket on Minpoike, they could make a swap with Vendetta in 35 seconds. They would have to make sure that they remove Jamie and Nixie at the same time with Cyclone and Polly. If they can accomplish this, Potentially, they can take down Minpoike. Minpoike is also playing a lot more aggressive in their face, so they could look to punish it. Other than that, there's not really a massive kill window for them. Well, uh, this is kind of the script here that you want to be doing as Method Black. First of all, you need to land a Bash Sheep onto Minpoike and proc the Veil Die off of Nixie. Second, you need to Smoke Bomb Nixie and use Mage cooldowns in that Smoke Bomb to force out Nixie's Trinket. Then you need to Blind Minpoike without using Vendetta and get Minpoike's Trinket and then you need to land a vanish into sheep on Minpoike and or, or you can just do this as well you can swap to him after you trigger the blind and try to one shot him with a vendetta like what's doing right now yeah a lot of pressure Minpoike gets the iron bark on himself though and I think 
We see Raik, who's kind of ran out of damage at this point. Waz is going to be able to put out some consistent pressure. Menfoike manages to sneak away, though. For now, still He's Waz there. Yeah, could be in some trouble. He does have the Iron Bark, though. He needs to make sure he can get that off or top himself off, which he seems to have easily done. But that was a really nice kill set up by Method Black. Fortunately, he just didn't have enough damage. But look at what opportunity it opened up now. They got Jamie's trinkets. So they can go after him in a smoke bomb, potentially, now in another uh, minute, roughly, for a Or just go with Icy Vein smoke bomb and try and take Jamie out while Menfoike is out of line of sight due to the smoke bomb. I really hope that they go for that. They've been going for the highest probability kill throughout this match, even without dampening, trying to play to whatever is the strongest option. Waz getting found by Menpoike, so he's forced to pull the trigger a little bit early, and Jamie was able to kite with a, an amazing sunder right before the stun could connect. There's the stun. Ooh, battle stance. Yeah, but I still think that would have been better on Jamie. Honestly, I don't think that they can take down Jamie uh, in the in the stun lock, and then when he comes out, he's just going to Astro Shift. Dampening, obviously, is not in the game yet, so he's going to be able to probably top himself out. Uh, later on in the dampening, though, that could definitely be an option for them. I think... I think... They, all they need to do is Blind Poiki get his Trinket, Smoke Bomb Nixie get his Trinket, and then Proc the Veil die and get a clean Vendetta a Kidney Shot onto Nixie when they get a Bash Cyclone like this onto Min Poiki. But they are going to take a page out of Sid's book here, Whoa. and they are going to land that Bash Clone, and they are going to go onto Jamie. Not even going to be able to proc that Veil die or force the Astral Shift here because he came out of that stun and just instant healed himself up for, you know, a billion. Yep, that was a big heal on himself for sure. Chaz getting swapped to now. Nixie doing a better job in this game, getting some pressure out. Minpoike jumping into it as well, trying to continue that pressure onto Chaz with the DR bash. Unfortunately, Chaz should be able to top himself off. Jamie, Nixie, completely fine. The off healing from Jamie paying dividends, so Chaz really, or Minpoike really doesn't have to worry too much. Big swap now with the smoke bomb, forcing out that trinket, blind on Minpoike as well. And Poike, he doesn't want to trinket this, so he, he's not going to trade out his trinket for this blind. That was not a good smoke bomb from Waz. I mean, this blind sap is decent, but it doesn't seem like they really have the damage to follow it up. It's a bait, so uh, they wanted to smoke bomb Jamie and get uh, you know, a panic reaction out of Temple Storm here. If they manage to get Poike's trinket there and they proc the Veil die, he will still have Vendetta in the bank. That's why Waz didn't commit the Vendetta. But I think Poike is also aware of this. He He's tracking that Vendetta. If he sees the Vendetta, he will trinket the blind. If he doesn't see it, then he knows it's not going to be that threatening with just the Frost Mage damage uh, trying to kill somebody. Yeah, we can see them actually killing off Raikou's pet every once in a while. Big swap over on a Nixie right now. Kidney shot does proc the trinket, so he's going to be fine, but the man will get that out. And the Iron Bark from Minpoike as well. Uh, there wasn't really too much committed except the Vendetta, so not a horrible trade there. But what I was saying, they're killing the Water Elemental off. And in BFA, it actually has a reduced cooldown now. So I believe it's only a 30-second cooldown as opposed to a minute. So killing off that Water Elemental, uh, isn't that effective? In the meantime, Waz barely survives the stun there. Trinket comes in to save the day. All right, evasion and Trinket from Chaz. So now there is kill potential. Waz may likely focus on defense if he overextends. He does not want to be going down. Dampening finally kicking in now, and it's likely to be critical mass around 30 to 40 percent as what it's consistently been throughout the tournament. Nixie's trying to get aggressive on Chaz. Waz shuts him down. Really good punish, but Minpoike in a good position to duck in and out around those boxes and time heals. Chaz knows Nixie is unlikely to go down, so he'll cyclone him and deny his bonus damage from Avatar. Good awareness from Chaz. Yeah, Raku blinks away, trying to stop Minpoike. Manages to do so, finding him in stealth. Poike doesn't get to reset his mana now. Another swap over on the Waz. And these swaps on Waz become very deadly. Like we said, rogues are a much more susceptible target in Battle for Azeroth without the spammable feint. It has a cooldown, so you have to time that much more precisely to keep yourself alive. With the Vortex catching Jamie, and if Nixie tries to move, he will get Vortex downstairs as well. He needs to be careful. He might go out of line of sight with it. Really amazing Vortex. He has to trade die by the sword now at a critical moment. When we get to 30, 40% dampening, he won't have that cooldown. Amazing Ursula's Vortex from Chaz. Oh, is Waz going to blind here? If Waz blinds here, he's not going to blind. Oh, there it is. No, and Nixie there's the trinket. Oh, and he still battle stance up. against Kitty did battle. And Poike trinkets out, though, so he does get the healing off. The only thing standing between uh, Method Black now and a uh, kill on Nixie is um, the Veil Die. If they proc that Veil Die with the next Smoke Bomb, then they have forced everything that they need to do, and then they can commit the next Kidney Shot with the Vendetta. If they land a, a Vanish Sheep Shot, if Waz holds on to that Vanish, and they and Raikou manages to get that Double Blink Sheep, they can close the game out uh, a bit earlier than what we're used to here. So right now, uh, Method Black has a real opportunity to close out this match. And right there, the Smoke Bomb, they might be able to force out the Veil Die. Right here, they need to get they it. They get it! it. 
You got Nixie's trinket as well in that exchange. This is huge. And Poike didn't throw out the iron bark just yet. A Wait, cyclone over on him to Poike. No, Nixie's taking some damage. Why did he do it? Uh, was I taught you better than that, bro? Whoopsie. It's okay. We are at 20% dampening right now. Everyone's topped off. Raikou actually committed his icy veins there as well, so a lot of offensive potential going to be used by Method Black in that kill. Fortunately, they weren't able to find it. Kidney shot now on Jamie. Chaz taking some damage. That kidney shot, they do find some damage there. Boyke should be able to heal through it, but I think it was more of a protection onto Chaz. He got a little bit low. He did trade out his trinket and his bark skin, so Chaz is now susceptible to a big swap if Nixie and Jamie can find some uptime. I want Minpoike to get aggressive. I feel like he's done absolutely nothing in terms of these games the entire well, day. Was, 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 was in trouble. Chaz iron barks him. That's likely to save the day, but I want to see Minpoike push up Bash clone Chaz right now. There's no trinket on Chaz and no trinket on Waz. Stormbolt one guy, Bash the other guy, burst and try and get a kill, and maybe do it in another 7% dampening, or even 10% dampening, but do it at some point. Minpoike has just been asleep the entire day just sitting back pressing rejuve and yeah you're gonna stay alive but you're not gonna win like that yeah i mean Pike has been hibernated this whole game uh but i think i i, I see what you're saying like if you compare it with looney playing the feral affinity charging in and restart there he goes is he making a move yeah, pushes in chaz is actually in a lot of trouble Next. gets there caught in the full bash bark skin as well this play from and poike could close out the game but a blind onto jamie nixie's out of line of sight chaz manages to survive very nicely done by method black chaz could still be in some trouble but now he is away that was a nice play from and poike you need to see consistent plays like that to help his team with a little bit of offense they almost closed out the game and now he's got a huge mana lead as well to go off the back of that at least. They've still got, uh, they've kind of lost the kill window. Waz is going to have trinket evasion. They're going to have to work their way through that and then get a kill. But that should be at a point of dampening where it's unlikely that he will survive. Let's see if Chaz can keep his team going. He's almost out of mana. And Poike is finally getting aggressive, realizing that this is the critical mass. This is where they need to start making plays to get momentum for their team. Chaz is just tanking out and bear from nice wild charge. Chaz uses every map to its full potential. The vortex is downstairs. The wild charge is back up. He's really been on fire today. Yeah, Raikou has always been there to support, which is a very important factor. If he's not right on that lip, then unfortunately not going to be able to get it. Waz lands a sap over on him, and Poiki has the trinket. He can't trink it before the blind, though, or that's going to be devastating for Tempo Storm. Waz and Raikou looking to get aggressive. You can see the warp ratio is going to be used in powering their damage. Nixie taking a lot of pressure. Waz not messing around, though. He wants to be able to kite away a little bit, reducing some damage, going for the re-stealth so he can get those cheap shots on Jamie and Nixie in the situation. Peel up for Chaz. All right, Waz caught into a stun. Unfortunately, not forcing a trinket. That's what they needed to get with that because now they're going to start falling behind and Nixie could potentially be on the back foot. Waz holding Vendetta, trying to proc that trinket before committing. Nixie manages to proc Waz's. That's going to set him behind and we're getting a critical mass. This is danger time for Method Black and Poike timing and innervate here to try and keep his mana lead, but Chaz has actually managed to even out, so even that advantage is lost. And Poike jumps in, Chaz repositions. Really good awareness from Chaz. Now he's sneaking away instead of looking for a clone, but Jamie backs up in Poike, shutting it down with a wind shear. Good backup from Jamie. He's gunning down Chaz. Nixie's tearing into Waz. Waz denies it by going for the kidney shot. Raikou has icy veins, and has he pressed it once this game? Yeah, he has a couple times, actually, so something we okay. normally don't see from him for quite some time, but there's a bash on Waz once again, and Poike looking to get aggressive. They get Waz's trinket. Now if they can put the next bash on Waz, they have a big amount of burst, then they could ultimately take him down. We're at 40% dampening, so these healers are going to start to really struggle. Ooh, Nixie tried to blade storm over to deny the clone from Chaz, but he was one second too late. Now Minkoik is getting locked out. Jamie is there with the clutch defense. Now they turn it around with a stun on Waz. Evasion is activated just in time to dodge the incoming attacks that would have otherwise killed him, but they overlap with Iron Bark. This overlap could cost them the game. They're in a position where they either need to completely abort and try and kite or go all out. And right now they're doing it halfway in between, and that's not going to be the best option. Waz goes in for an all-in attempt on Minpoike. Baits the bark skin from him. Wanted to try and get the trinket, maybe blind him and kill somebody else, but bark skin's better than nothing, at least. He's going to need to start kiting. He's caught into the storm, but Minpoike, he needs to make some plays. He jumps in, uh, goes for the DR, DR bash, bash, and that might be enough. I would have maybe liked to see the bash on Chaz. Uh, and Waz is going to escape once again. Yeah, Cloak of Shadows. 
was used and the vanish. So the small victory for Temple Storm. Chaz didn't commit the Iron Bark though, so that's off cooldown now, and that's why Was had to use so much. Kitty shot on Nixie. A lot of pressure coming in from Temple Storm. Icy veins can be committed by Raikou as he pushes in, looking for a sheep and gets the sheep on Minpoike. Now Nixie's gonna be in so much trouble, but he preemptively uses that Iron Bark. That was beautifully done by Raikou, but unfortunately they just didn't have the damage to really follow up. Yeah, Raikou now the target, but with another ice block. I Ah, okay, they get it out of nowhere. I mean, we're at 50% dampening. Your hots are not going to do a lot at 50% reduced effectiveness. Sharpened Blade on the whole team. This is swinging in favor of Tempo Storm. Method Black are flailing just to stay alive. They have no clear openings to victory right now. This should easily be Tempo Storm's game unless they throw it away. Yeah, Kitty shot now on Nixie. Minpoike, I think he was trying to go for a drink, but realizing he doesn't really have too much time. And uh, you can see Method Black, they're looking for a reset. Raikou's going to be kiting away. Waz going to be kiting away. But Jamie and Nixie, they realize their classes do so much more damage at this point in the game. If they have uptime, it is going to be their game to play. In. But unfortunately, still big burst going out on the Nixie. Has to play it a little bit safe. All right, Stormbolt on Chaz. Was ah! in trouble. Was trinkets, but he doesn't have anything for eight more seconds. He defends. He shadow steps to Minpoike. Minpoike gave Was a getaway target. He didn't oh, have anyone no. else to shadow step to. Minpoike just let Was escape by running in his line of sight. They try to switch to Chaz. Method Black pull off a miracle off the back of that. It's going to be absolutely insane. That that would be the play too. Yeah, Waz got a restealth, so now he can move in and get some stuns. Might be able to stun him at Poike, allowing Raikou to get some CC, but Raikou, unfortunately, not going to be able to use those blinks offensively at 55% damage. Smoke Everything bomb. is a risky play. A lot of damage over on the Nixie with the smoke bomb, with the kidney shot. It's the kick over on Poike as well. Very nicely done. Nixie, though, seems like he's going to be able to survive Evan Bolt being cast out by Raikou, but Waz gets stunned. Preemptive Iron Bark by Chaz there, I believe, onto uh, Waz to keep him alive. All right, it's down to the wire. It's anyone's game at this point. It's a clear tie on cooldowns at the moment with both healers on no trinkets. Well, nice vortex down out of line of sight. Chaz charges in to end this towards him. Poike trying to crowd control him as he crosses the map, but Waz is still on the back foot. Nixie tearing in with this blade from Chaz is getting owned by Jamie. Jamie might just get a solo kill. Jamie off to jump down instead of continue going after Chaz. Now Chaz goes for Tranquility. Everybody's in danger. Waz caught into the storm boat. Nixie finally going to connect to execute. No, Waz hangs on by a threat. Nixie has to leap away. He's going to leap on Chaz. Chaz draws up for cover. He's barely hanging on. Nixie is so low as well. Dampany is just so high that nobody can heal anymore at this point. Nixie getting garroted. Waz getting a cheeky restealth. Kidney shot with no drink and Frozen Orb. That the Black might just pull off a miracle. Well, Jamie's off heels are the only thing keeping Nixie going right now. Defensive fear. Nixie hands on. Jamie's oom, Nixie falls, and Method Black do it! <laughs> Can't believe it! Another 63% dampening game for Temple Storm, but Method Black honestly oh, was. Wait, 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 wait. They're still playing it out. I, I don't know if he's I, it, we'll, we'll jump back if that is. kind of said that last game was theirs to sort of throw away. Method Black did a good job, um, but uh, hopefully on the smaller map for Temple Storm, they can get a little bit more uptime on their targets. Uh, I think. It's going to be really difficult for Chaz to get the resets that we kind of saw in Dalaran. Oop, and Poike getting found out by Raikou. I don't think he's going to be able to sap him, but he might cheap shot ring or something. Chaz actually going to cyclone out of this. This is a good setup by Method Black, putting all three members in crowd control simultaneously and now going for burst damage on Nixie. Going all in in the opener, maybe trying to catch him in Poike off guard on match point, but ultimately that Veiled Eye Absorb going to allow Nixie to soak up all of that initial assault. What was right there, he wanted to sap. He wanted to smoke bomb out of the cyclone and then try to vanish sap me Poike there. Uh, didn't end up working for him and now he's committed his vanish, his smoke bomb as well as his vendetta and all they managed to pull out was the veiled eye. I, I really think that if they tried they could potentially play around every single CD but I also think that the easier way of dealing with the Veiled Eye is maybe to just blind Mimpoike, then uh, or maybe swap to Mimpoike and bait out his bark skin and then blind him when uh, you want to do a big setup with Smoke Bomb or something onto Nixie and then try to swap back to Mimpoike. And even if he's in bear form, if you have Vendetta and he doesn't have bark skin or trinket, you can perhaps win the game that way. I really think that those are really the only options available for Method Black uh, before dampening in terms of trying to generate kills. We obviously have been talking about the 
veiled eye quite a bit, but that's not the only defensive tool that we have been seeing being brought into the arena. The other one is going to be Machimba's Ritual Bandages, and we actually do need to talk about it because we see quite a few of the players having this equipped. This is going to be a trinket that drops from King's Rest, and it is another very defensive tool. It is another tank trinket, and we see a lot of these players deciding to rock Machimba's while also using Veiled Eye. Veiled Eye almost seems like a 100% bis right now. Everybody's just like, you lose too much by not putting it on. It's pretty much an auto bubble, but Machimba's also is going to have a strong effect as well, and it is going to have a big absorb. Oh, they, they got the uh, Veiled Eye right there from Nixie. Mandela is going to be up in 10 seconds. I think Waz is going to have his blind ready as well. Uh, if he can actually blind me, Poike, out of this sheep right here without using his vendetta. Okay, one more sheep. Blind. Okay, kidney into blind. I like that. If he gets the blind, I mean, Poike trinkets. No, they're going to go for the second one. Good crowd control, though. They I managed to pull like die by the sword. Did that proc... Maybe he is playing Machimba. Yeah, he is playing Machimba. So That's the first thing was Machimba, and then this is the uh, veil die. Right. It's a lot of defense coming in from Nixie with those trinkets. That's what's allowing Temple Storm to bring this game uh, extended for so long. Now the swap over onto Chaz. Uh, his mana is doing okay, but I, I really feel like on this map it's going to be really difficult for him to get a reset, and I think that's why Temple Storm wanted to get, uh, you know, get going on this map because Minpoike should theoretically have the mana advantage with the amount of consistent pressure Jamie and Nixie can put out. There's more shields in this game than a late game Protoss match. I wish that we could find tanks with this many tank trinkets right now to actually move through our plus tankies. It, it's it's pretty crazy, and I do want to kind of also let you guys know at home because this may seem different than what you're experiencing on the ladder right now. I, I'll be completely honest. Sid, last night we didn't run into... We did run into some hybrid healers healing themselves quite a bit, but we didn't see anybody rocking these tank trinkets. Why? Because on the tournament realm, these guys are going to have access to all of that gear. They're going to be able to go up to a trinket vendor and be able to hand pick things. Will the ladder potentially move towards this? It might. It might. We'll have to see what happens to these trinkets. But ultimately, you're only going to be able to get Machimbas if you have that specialization on your yeah. class and you're doing King's Rest or if you get it traded through personal loot. It's not something that's going to be easily farmable. You're not going to be able to grab. Raikou would not be able to get that to drop for him ever. There's no specialization that he could get that for personal loot. He would need to get it traded from uh, somebody else. He could bring Chaz with him. He could bring Chaz with him. Yes, but it, it is harder to get. It's going to take a longer amount of time, and that's why this meta has moved in a different place than ladder. I just wanted to point that out to anyone at home that's going, why does this yeah. look different? Everybody at home is thinking, hunters, hunters, hunters. Where are all the hunters? NA still played them, but in EU, all of these absorbed trinkets allow you to survive during freezing trap and really elongate the game, and usually hunters are on a short leash to get a kill, and that's why we don't see them so much in the EU region. The EU region just focusing on surviving and playing as long of a game as possible. Actually, Temple Storm has done a pretty good job in this game, uh, setting out the groundwork for Chas Manabar here before the dampening. He's going to be down to about 40%. So if they can prevent Chas from drinking by keeping some bleeds on him or maybe the flame shock and consistently pushing out pressure, then they could potentially actually um, uh, have a situation where Chas is going to be going out of mana much quicker in this match. So it's going to be up to Nixie and Jamie to make sure that Chas doesn't get those greens off. Nice by Raikou. Ice Nova Nixie. Nixie wanted to heroically pummel the Cyclone, but he got Ice Nova by Raikou. That was all three members of Method Black setting up Chaz to get that crowd control. And it's this kind of teamwork when we get into deep dampening that just completely dismantles their opponents. Dampening now having just started, as he pointed out, they've been working down Chaz's mana bars. It's a great position to start dampening for Tempo Storm. Chaz preemptively activates Iron Bark before getting stunned. That was a nice read by him. Raikou will easily soak a lot of damage for free now as as a result, allowing Chaz to sit through that crowd control. Waz looking to try and set something up for his team. Gunning down after Minpoike. Managing to catch him out of bear form. Nixie's going to back him up with a Storm Bolt. That should allow Minpoike in more than enough time to recover. Yeah, he's going to be just fine with that bark skin. Raikou committing a little bit of damage there. But Jamie's been doing a good job with the pressure. Both Nixie and Jamie have right, been splitting a lot in this matchup. And that is really going to tax Chaz's mana to the, the maximum amount. Unfortunately for them, Chaz went for a drink. And he got basically full mana in that situation. So he's actually ahead of Minpoike now. You can see Minpoike realizing he goes into cat form. He's looking for a restealth. He's looking for a drink. Might be able to find it. But in the meantime, that's the black looking to punish that. A lot of damage on the Nixie. And Poike responds with an iron bar. 
All right, let's see what are the openings here for either team. Nixie with no trinket, Smokebomb not available. They could still go after him, but they'd have to crowd control three members. Cheap shots, they don't have vanish for 24. So 20 seconds, Waz is gonna be looking to try and get something going here for his team and bait some trinkets. Maybe a blind sooner than later would also be preferable. Nixie going for sharpened blade. He's just chopping up Waz while marching towards his target. It's really important as a melee class that you, if you want to hit the mage, it's important that you're hitting something along the way to that target. You don't just want to be attacking nothing walking at Raikou, so he's maximizing his damage. Now switching to Chaz. Chaz is already in bear form, ready for this. He's actually kind of sneaking his way towards Minpoike. I'm curious if Method Black are ready. They've got Vanish available. There's the kidney shot. They catch Nixie behind the pillar. Oh! Very nicely done by Waz. Gets the Vanish sap on Minpoike as he fell out of combat. Chaz in a good position to follow it up with the Cyclone. There's the Bash potential Cyclone. Is Jamie going to be able to stop it? No, doesn't have it. Now Nixie could be in some trouble. Vendetta committed by Waz. Nixie getting low. In the meantime, Chaz taking quite a bit of damage. He leaps away over on to Raikou. Should be able to recover. Should be able to stay and uh, although that was a beautiful sap from Waz, they really didn't pull anything from Nixie. It's an unfortunate result for Method Black. That could have keyed them some major defensive cooldowns, just setting into that critical point of dampening and maybe set up a win for them. Now with that win condition basically gone, after Ooh. having trinkets, they set up a Minpoike, they get his bark skin. Raku going all in on this. I don't think it's going to be enough damage to ultimately kill Minpoike. Jamie can also toss out some off heals. Waz always looking for these restells, and the restells have actually carried his team in this entire series. It just allows him to get multiple stuns and bonus Garrow damage. It's a really key play from Waz. Rather than just tunneling into a target, he goes and resets, resets his energy, gets in stealth, and gets all the benefits of it. I really want to see Tempo Storm deny those restells a little bit more. It looks like they're just all inning Minpoike. He did manage to get into bear form before this incoming stun, absorbing a lot of this damage, allowing him to tank it, now recovering. Waz is still just gunning him down, and this is match point. Yeah, Minpoike taking quite a bit of damage. Still has the Iron Bark in the Bark, or still has his Trinket and Iron Bark to fall back onto if he needs to. Jamie trying to punish Waz, and we actually saw Waz throw it as blind onto Jamie. He trinketed out of that, and that's why Minpoike really didn't have to use so much. Jamie acting as sort of a secondary healer kept Minpoike alive in that swap. In the meantime, though, Nixie using the Blade Storm over on Chaz. Waz running down a little bit now. Chaz has to play catch up or 25% dampening. It's going to start getting very scary for both teams. All right, no trinket on Jamie. Smoke bomb available. They could go for him if they can make him overextend. They're polymorphing him, trying to bait Minpoki to come in for Dispel. They're just going to commit to Nixie with the smoke bomb. They do get trinket from him. Critical to get it now before the 40% dampening mark, where he won't be able to activate his die by the sword. This could end up being Ooh. a mistake. Nicely done. Vanish cheap shot on him and Poiki out of the smoke bomb. Raikou follows it up with the polymorph, looking for another one. Chaz going for the cyclone as well. They managed to interrupt both of them. Nicely done by Tempo Storm. That double cast coming in from Raikou and Chaz with the Druid and the Mage Crowd Control can be very difficult to deal with, but they managed to free Minpoike out of the Crowd Control. Now getting aggressive onto Waz once again, but Raikou has honestly been doing a great job. He's making sure if he doesn't have a Blizzard down, he keeps Frostbolt on both members, so they're always snared, allowing Waz to run away, get the restyle, so allowing, Ch allowing Chaz to escape as well. So very nicely done by uh, Method Black. This is going perfectly for Method Black right now. They've got the proc on the Absorb. They've gotten through the Iron Bark of Minpoike. If they can manage to pull his Trinket in this crowd control chain, they've got a win condition to kill Nixie quite easily. They've got to do it soon. They're in that critical mass point. Wazo is falling behind. Nixie chopping him up. Tons of damage. Will he be able to survive? Evasion gets traded out, not giving Nixie his back, allowing him to recover from a quick swift man. Jamie going after Raikou, trying to split the pressure and tap Chaz's mana. Minpoike finally getting aggressive, going for bashes on Chaz. Raikou falling behind as a result, trying to blink to safety. Here comes the setup. Method Black have to win. Off the back of this, they don't get any crowd control secured on the Minpoike. He's able to easily heal through it. And now they're on the clock. They're so far behind on mana. Yeah, Waz had to trade out that evasion too, so this is very scary. Chaz has to make a crucial decision. Who's he going to throw that Iron Bark out onto? It's a huge regrowth on Raikou, and you can see Raikou just trying to pause out the game, throwing out the Polymorph, throwing out the Snares, allowing a reset on HP as Method Black was a little bit behind. Finally, Method Black back in it. Here's a nice setup over on Nixie once again. Full Cyclone on him in Poike. Is he going to trink it out? Doesn't look like Method Black it really has the damage. Finally, a Comet Storm connecting for them. Nixie getting a little bit low, but a big Storm Bolt over onto Waz. He could be in trouble. Chaz Realizing the situation, he uses the iron bark, deflecting the damage, and Waz will live another day.
Yeah, and he pre-fainted the storm bolt, so Waz diff still playing on fire. He's definitely not dampened. He's ready to just clean this up, even though they're so heavily disadvantaged. It's important to point out that Tempo Storm were 3-0'd by the same composition that they're playing right now. So this is very impressive by Method Black, and it's setting them up for a, a good opportunity in the grand final should they take this match. Nixie desperately trying to get a kill here and end the match. Chaz charging away. Minpoike giving him the getaway again. Now he's able to get a bash. Cyclone, he's in safety potential. Grounding Totem, I think, denied it really good teamwork from jamie his defense has been great throughout this series but defense doesn't win you the game eventually you've got to execute a kill nixie caught in a stun curious to see if pinpoike trades out iron bark here they're kind of just baiting it with dampening so high it might just be required they do manage to proc the absorb at least but method black I don't think it's looking too good for them, Ben. Look at Raikou, though. He uses the Icy Veins, generating some pressure over onto Nixie. But this is so scary. Chaz did trade out his trinket on that Bash from Minpoike. He didn't want to fall far behind, but he's just in an unrecoverable situation. Bash over onto Waz. He has the evasion, needs to get that off. Onto the Triple DR Stormbolt. There's the evasion. That'll be surely enough to keep him alive for now. But Chaz, he's running on fumes. He does not have the mana to sustain this for much longer. I mean, again, it's Tempo Storm's game to throw at this point. They've got the clear win condition. The mana is gone. Chaz is trying to drink and they need to stop it. Where is he drinking right now? I don't think they can stop. He got the man lead again. Oh, man, the black are staying in it. We're getting to 50% dampening. Waz doesn't have evasion, though. These shadow steps. These shadow steps to the water elemental, but Nixie's still all over him. Raikou in panic polymorph mode to try and buy him more time. Will it be enough? Nice cyclone at low health. Trying to deny it and trying to allow Chaz to recover as well. They're just crowd controlling the whole team. The Hots aren't doing anything. We're at 50% healing reduction, but Nixie has no trinket. And Poik has to have his Iron Bark ready to go here on the next kidney shot. Stormbolt was trinkets. There's really nothing left for him to do. It's all or nothing at this point. Who will fall first? It's still Tempo Storm's game to throw. Was going to kidney shot Nixie. There's the Iron Bark. When Poik trades that out immediately, and Was is likely to fall as Tempo Storm clean up the late game and put a point on the board for today. And now they need to get that going again and again. They need a full reverse sweep if they want to keep it. Well, exactly. But it's just that one thing. There's not that much uh, versatility on on that person. And then there's a bunch the of that in NA has. too, right? Like in NA, yeah, you have the best Holy Paladin potentially yeah. and things like that. But it's like, and then you have a lot of really strong shamans. Yeah. But one of the reasons that Looney and Chaz are cut from a different cloth is because of their multi-spec capabilities. And that is why they win tournaments, folks. Yep. They just allow your composition to... You can play aggressive comps like the RMP, you can play dampening comps, you can play wizard cleaves. Uh, and let's see what Waz is up to here. He's gonna drop that smoke bomb with the Vendetta. I mean, Poik is gonna easily outheal that one with the Tranquility. They didn't really manage to pull out the uh, Zazak's Veiled Eye with that one. Uh, so Nyx is still gonna be having that one available in the bank. And now it's gonna be a little bit of a hard reset here on the side of uh, Temple Storm. Yep, Chaz getting chased down by Jamie, but managing to get to safety, trying to deny any follow-up crowd control onto Minpoike. Nixie kiting back behind the pillar. Not really able to get anything done early on. As Method Black completely take control of Jamie's ascendance, removing it from the game. Nixie removed from the game of Polly. Chaz looking for drinks, and on such a large map, he's going to be able to drink often. It's going to allow him to extend his mana. That's ultimately why he fell so far behind in the previous game. So this map should allow them to remove that disadvantage. And that's why I think they are still staying to the rogue mage. However, if they lose on this very big map, I'm wondering what their options are going to be. Yeah, it's going to be difficult for sure. Like we said, they can maybe go to the mirror, but uh, I don't know. It's looking good for Method Black, I believe, on this map. Raikou just provides so much support with these large distances. Tolveron Arena, very wide open. Chaz, he can kite from one pillar to the other, allowing Raikou to get the Frostbolts out, get the Polymorphs out, get the Novas out, uh, which are difficult for Jamie and Nixie to really deal with. I really think that if Tempo Storm can manage to somehow win this one later on in dampening, they're going to be in a pretty good spot because this is the worst map for them. That's going to be out of the equation. Later on, they're going to have to play some, something like Ashaman's Fall, which would be kind of decent for them still. And not as big of a disadvantage as here. As you can see, Chaz is just moving all over the map, doing essentially whatever he wants, with Raikou kind of standing in the middle there, kind of like a goalkeeper, a goalkeeper making sure that everybody is moving in slow motion. All right, Nixie, the brunt of this attack by Method Black, ultimately not resulting in too much. Raikou is focusing on a lot more polymorphs in this game, desperately trying to hold on to Chaz's mana for a kill later in dampening. Nice spell reflect on Chaz's Cyclone. 
It's going to allow time maybe for Jamie to get to his target and Chaz's hots to start falling off, looking for another Cyclone. Unfortunately, overlap there. It's definitely a mistake from Raikou and Chaz on Mixie. They make a swap to Minpoike, trying to catch him off guard. He's going to trade Barkskin as Vendetta had been committed. That is a fair trade from Minpoike. He's now going to be bashing up Waz and potentially Cyclonium, ducking out along the side. Doesn't want to risk getting Blink counterspelled, I suppose. Now Chaz getting swapped to two members on him from Team Tempo Storm. Not even getting a bar skin, though. Yeah, Chaz, he uh, manages to get away without really using too much there. Not too scared with Waz and Raikou backing him up, but still you can see Jamie just <laughs> he's just chasing after him, the Terminator of this game. Raikou's doing a good job with the Novas, with the Roots, with the Snares, but still, wow, Chaz manages to escape. Another Polymorph over on a Jamie Minpoika sitting down for a drink. Both Druids don't want to be in a situation where they go into dampening and they don't have full mana available to them. That's why at this point, it's relatively safe for them to sit down, recover their mana very, very early, and then they can easily top off their teammates. All right, Waz, the target of this exchange, and trading out Machimba. So I think Waz is also wearing double absorb trinkets this game. Waz actually just getting a re-stealth in the middle of the map. He's going to get a lot of bonus damage and access to stealth attacks such as Garrod. So it's nice that Waz is taking any opportunity that he sees to constantly get into stealth. Kidney shot on Nixie. Chaz crossing the map slightly, not, not completely. Chaz is making up his mind right now. Does he go and push in for crowd control or just pull away? And it looks like Method Black are opting to pull away. It looks like uh, Raikou is just going to be trying to slow everyone up. He's trying to uh, just get those icicles rolling as well. And then uh, he's waiting for that vendetta of, of Waz to come back up so they can kind of uh, set up a big setup here onto Nixie. Uh, they want to do some setups here where they actually don't uh, commit damage cooldowns such as the Icy Veins and the Vendetta and they can pull out the uh, Veil Die, pull out maybe the Die by the Sword even from Nixie or one of these Trinkets and then they can really hard commit but uh, Waz is going to have his Smoke Bomb ready I want to see him drop a big Smoke Bomb onto Nixie, force out Nixie's Trinket, get a Bash Sheep on Mimpoike, force out the Veil Die and then blind Mimpoike for the next setup, get Mimpoike's Trinket and then really set up a clean kill on the Nixie because that's the only way I really see that this game ends before dampening and that's the only real kill opportunities I see for Method Black but instead Waz is going to try to be slowing down uh, Jamie using his blind defensively onto Jamie uh, which gives Chaz a little bit of a mana lead because he's consistently going to be have to going to have to deal with less damage that every two minutes there's going to be a full blind onto Jamie and then Nixie of course going to be sitting in D stance and Method Black strategy isn't to set up any of those kills it's more to just play for the long game they know they've won in dampening before so they want to do it again well we've seen insane plays from Waz where he gets the vanish saps and it gets followed up by Chaz and they have basically 20 seconds of CC on Minpoike and really nothing happens so you can't blame them for wanting to solve the game and wait until dampening Nixie now getting comfortable going behind the pillar bash on him in Minpoike Nixie taking quite a bit of damage but in the meantime Waz is the one that's dying he has to retreat once again the Rogue is very, very squishy in this expansion. So when Jamie and Nixie can have uptime on him, they can punish Waz very, very easily, very, very quickly. So he has to be very careful and do these hit and run tactics. <laughs> Look at Nixie, man. He's just so, uh, he's so, Waz is literally just laughing at it. He re-stealth in front of his face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Frost Mage as Warrior feels bad, man. Nixie's trying to get to his target. Jamie's Frost no good. Method Black are just focusing on maintaining Chaz's mana. On the small map, they couldn't really do it. On the larger map, they definitely can. And then later into Dampening, they're going to be setting up for kills. The only thing I really think that's worth debating is whether or not Waz should use Blind on Nixie instead. I, I mean, I understand using Blind to stop damage, but you might bait Nixie to Trinket, and then you get that defensive out of the way to, later. How do you feel about that, Zico? I think that in order to do it, you need to make Nixie feel like someone is in danger and he needs to peel. So if you're going to do a blind on Nixie to bait out his trinket, I think you have to do a blind on Nixie and a kidney shot on Mimpoike and then maybe drop a frozen orb so Nixie wants to trinket and then come in with the disarm and uh, be in that defensive state of mind, essentially. Uh, I think that if they do that, they can definitely get Nixie's trinket. Uh, another option for them is, of course, to use that smoke bomb and bait out his trinket with that. As long as they don't commit the vendetta uh, and they only really trade in the or maybe a Comet Storm Ice Nova from Raikou's uh, end of the screen, uh, then they can also get the trinket that way. And if they do, then they're going to have that blind, 
get me point the string get all they have to do now is play around the veil die and all of a sudden you have a kill opportunity problem is I feel like the patience on Method Black has just been one step too short. They've been playing around all those defensive cooldowns in the previous games, but not the Veiled Eye. The Veiled Eye has always been kind of that thing that stops them in their tracks. Yeah, but they've been very patient this game, just really, really trying to stall it out and wait. One of the main advantages that Method Black really has is the fact that they have a range on their team. They have Raikou on the Frost Mage. If Nixie and Jamie have limited uptime, that allows Raikou to actually get out that significant damage. Kidney shot on Nixie now. Wasp and uh, Raikou trying to put out some pressure. Actually committing the Icy Veins. Normally don't see that from Raikou until a little bit later on in the game, but Poike having no trinket. They got the crowd control. He wanted to put out some damage. Unfortunately for him, wasn't able to really find it. Nixie gets topped off. Weren't able to really force out any cooldowns. In the meantime, though, Chaz getting swapped to. Caught in the bash. Has to trinket out. And bark skin. Look at Waz. Perfect positioning for Chaz to get away. And uh, I mean, I like what Jamie did there. He hexed Raikou to bait Chaz to come out of bear form to dispel him. So Chaz waited a second. Didn't fall for the bait. Then Waz set up for him to escape. And then he could dispel after he had escaped. So that was really good presence of mind from Chaz. Not getting too over eager to get that dispel right away. He can show you it was safe to do so. Nixie seems to be just tunneling down Chaz, and he's overextended. They do finally pull okay. the trinket from Nixie. A big victory for Method Black. Now they've managed to pull out that trinket from Nixie. I mean, Poike doesn't have his trinket just yet. Vendetta is going to come up in about a minute. So will Mimpoike's trinket. I would love to see that blind committed to Mimpoike and then pull out the Veil die and try to close out the game in true RMD fashion with a clean kill. Poike is sitting down for that little sip there, but he realizes that his uh, melees are way too far away from him, so he's going to come back and make sure that nobody falls behind because they do want to save that Veil die prop for when they really need it. And Poike getting sheep shot into that polymorph by Raikou. And this is it. They can force the Veil Die here from Nixie. And, and without using the Vendetta here, they're going to have a very real opportunity to kill him if they manage to get it. And they do. Perfect setup here by Method Black. They've maintained their mana into critical dampening 30, 40% range. They're looking good to set up and advance to the grand finals to face off in a best of seven against XRB to the moon. However, XRB to the moon, I would say, is a, of a much higher caliber turbo. Tempo Storm, I kind of just throwing that out there because it, it worked well for XRB. I would say they've got much less practice than XRB overall on the composition. So I'm not sure if Method Black will have the same kind of run should they make it that far. Waz trying to set up for the win here. They've got the trinkets out of the way. They've got the absorbs, but they don't get the follow-up on Minpoike. Now he's able to do a lot of healing and deny this kill window. So that's the trinket grounding right there from Jamie. Now, if they blind up Minpoike and get his trinket, the only thing that can save Nixie is a pre-die by the sword before he actually gets done. And if he does that, I think Waz should just step kidney shot him from behind and just try to go through it, honestly, uh, because that is going to be a hard reset otherwise on all of these cooldowns that they just forced. Uh, and it's just it's just so much to force, actually, uh, when the rotation is this many cooldowns. And Chaz uh -oh. in big trouble. Uh-oh, Chaz in a lot of trouble. Gets the Iron Vark off, though. Bark skin as well. Trinket was just used, so Chaz actually has nothing left. His mana is not looking good. Temple Storm managing to find pressure. Chaz really doesn't have too much left. Nixie's still all over him. Needs to be able to escape. Raikou getting the snares up when he can. Waz gets the reset as well, so Stun's going to be out onto the entire team of Temple Storm. Chaz manages to get away for now, but that was a scary moment. Yeah, and it's now a soft reset. This game is now in Tempo Storm's favor, and their game to throw again. They have all trinkets, they have Dive of the Swords, they have Iron Bark, they have significant mana lead. Dampening's at a critical point where now they can start forcing evasion and other powerful cooldowns of the like. They managed to get the Veiled Eye from Waz. It's looking better and better for Tempo Storm, and this is why I was wondering if Method Black were going to mirror them, because this matchup wasn't looking good for them. I feel like they were winning the matchup because Tempo Storm was making mistakes or not playing aggressive enough, rather than them just winning because they were playing really well as that comp. Well, here's the thing. Temple Storm, even though, you know, they're playing pretty well, the only reason Method Black managed to win any of those games is because Waz had those miracle plays. If a Temple Storm can just play solid, play consistently, it's going to be difficult for Method Black indeed. Waz trades out the feint, doesn't have the vanish, still very, very scared. Chaz has to throw out the iron bark as well. Nixie turning his attention over onto him, wants to deny these cyclones. Doesn't get fake casted on the pummel just yet putting out some decent pressure. Jamie putting pressure on Raikou, not let out, allowing him to spam out the polymorphs and frost bolts. And now Chaz basically has to heal all three targets. Don't vent that here, Waz. Whatever you do, do not use it. They get the smoke bomb. They don't get the trinket from Nixie there. Here, they needed to get either the trinket or the die by the sword. Had they gone on that, it would, they would have been in a phenomenal situation to actually win the game. Now, Tempo Storm has, has all the control here for the rest of the game.
I mean, they have to win off sustained pressure at this point. There's no other than maybe a swap to in Poike. That, that is right now the only option I see for them. They've got Vendetta and no Trinket. So Shadow Step Kidney out of form. Polymorph on Jamie Clone and Nixie, something of the like, and just all in in Poike. Chaz is trying to get a drink. Waz is in full kiting mode along with Raikou. Can he avoid Nixie long enough? Ugh. No, Chaz gets denied on the drink, and Jamie's on top of him. Chaz goes for a bash, potentially a Cyclone squeaking in a regrowth in between maximizing those global cooldowns. They're trying to lead the charge on Nixie and kill, which is raw pressure at almost 50% healing reduction into this match. It's still match point. Tempo Storm don't want to throw the game. They've got a lot of options to stay alive. They just need to make sure they Ooh, trade Nixie. them out. Vendetta gets popped. Nixie's being greedy. Minpoike buys the time with Iron Bark. Will Iron Bark be enough at 50% dampening? We're about to find out. Chaz gets bashed. Minpoike moves in to try and get a game-winning clone, potentially. Doesn't even go for it, actually. Chaz now bark skins. He's got Iron Bark as well. Raikou trying to get out of that dog pile. He doesn't want to get cleaved by the enemy team. Nice Vortex on the charge of Nixie. He's forced to now Blade Storm. Method Black are just kiting to stay alive. They managed to pull Die by the sword. Somehow, some way, Method Black are staying in it. Yeah, Nixie's still a little bit low, though. Method Black trying to keep up the pressure onto him, making sure Nixie has to second-guess himself when he wants to chase after Waz like this. Now caught in the kidney shot. He has the trinket, but doesn't want to activate it too late. Doesn't really have anything to respond with no die by the sword available. Raikou using the Ray of Frost. A lot of pressure out on Nixie. And Poike's going to be able to stabilize, I think, with the Iron Bark, even at 55% dampening. Just such a powerful cooldown. In the meantime, though, Waz in a lot of trouble. Cyclone over on Chaz. Good job by Poike there. Nixie's still... The spell trying. reflected by Nixie. True. At low health. So. I think you're right. <laughs> Good reaction from Nixie. Now he's got Trinket. I, I, him sitting, this is kind of risky, but looks like he's getting away with it. He's going to fall really far behind, and Poike has to Trinket. Evasion still available for Waz. Icy Veins available, and even though the mana's not in favor, the momentum is, and Method Black are looking like they're oh, going to march the victory. Nice counter spell. Evan Bolt gets winchered by Jamie. Good defense in these potentially final seconds of this game, and Poike gets Shadow Step Kidney Shot. Waz is... Trying to switch targets. Uh, now he's getting feared up by Nixie behind the pillar. He's got Trinket for a Storm Bolt. Minpoike gets blinded with no Trinket. How is Nixie going to stay alive? Both of his teammates locked down. He's just hugging Minpoike. He tries to Storm Bolt to vanish, but doesn't get it. Was Trinkets and vanishes. Gets the sap. Continues the chain and is pushing for victory. Perfect crowd control chain by Method Black. Is it going to be enough? Nixie hanging out by a thread, but Chaz nails the bash. Was is dipping low as well. Could potentially be a cross kill. Will Nixie hang on? It looks like he will. Waz has to shadow step out just to stay alive. Nixie in hot pursuit. How is Nixie alive? Both Waz and Nixie. This could absolutely be a cross kill. Ultimately, oh. Nixie goes down. Waz might manage to survive. Beautiful cyclone coming in from Chaz to slow down any incoming damage from Jamie. That was such a close call. Waz with MVP plays. The blind sap. Kitty shot on a Nixie. He's got so much momentum from that. And feed versus the fake Zebras. We're all tied up. One and one. Who is going to find themselves on match point? Who is is going to get a little bit further into this tournament. Keep in mind, folks, we're doing a brand new thing. You have just entered, in the middle of history, the longest series that has ever been played in Battle for Azeroth.